Okay, back with another video. Let's try and get this one done quickly. <laughs> what language should you be talking? What What am I talking about? I'm talking about the language you use when you are talking in your persona and what language you use when you are talking as a real man. Now, and the answer is pretty simple. If you just take a step back and say, well, if I'm a real man, what language am I talking to other men? I'm just talking my local common English dialect. That's the language I should be talking to real men, isn't it? Simple as that. Okay. When it comes to legal matters, what language should I be talking? Here comes the problem. If you're wanting to operate as a real man, it doesn't matter what bloody language you talk in. Um, because, number one, they shouldn't really be listening to what you've got to say anyway. Because, as I said in other videos, um, fictional, legal fictional entities can't hear what a man has to say. This is why we have the person. This is why they invented the um, birth certificate, put slapped your name on it in a different font, and guess what? You go along with the uh, with the illusion and you start acting as that person. Now in that scenario, you're going to want to talk in legal language when you do anything legally. But what is legal language? <laughs> and this is the big problem. Because how are we ever going to know what legal language is if we don't have some kind of definition um, that is given to us um, in a format that is of the highest order. And who knows what the highest order is? Well, there's only... I don't know if anybody knows what the highest order of um, authority is on, on the actual language. Uh, because I don't know who invented the system. So it's impossible for me to find out what the actual... what actual correct... Um, legal language is. There's no way of actually finding it out. All we can do is we can go to things such as Black Laws Dictionary, and there's a few other legal dictionaries, Chicago Style Manual, um, those sort of things in order to find out what we should be saying legally. Um, and of course we can go on what other people say other people teach about legal things and we can also look at what the system teaches us about correct grammar okay um, if we start off with what is correct grammar in terms of um, legally we would want to be using ultra correct grammar okay when we're talking um, but as a man to man the grammar that we're using is still correct. Um, we get into, in the legal system, we're talking about a more prescriptive type of grammar where things are done correct, correctly, correctly. Whereas with the real man, we're talking about um, descriptive grammar, which, you know, something such as saying, I ain't going to go to the shops today. I ain't going to go down the shops today, or something like that. That's still correct, descriptively speaking, in terms of grammar. Um, because it's understandable by other men, okay? You know, somebody else can still understand that. So we don't have, a, we don't have trouble with that to a, to a huge extent, do we, when we're talking to one another? Um, you, you might, if you get into some real local places, <laughs> the, the accents might become thicker. But hopefully every, what everybody's writing down is very similar. Um, and there might be some slang terminology that certain cultures use over, you know, say that other cultures don't use. But for the, for the general purpose of communicating with people and especially in your own local area because that's all you that's the only people you're going to be dealing with really I mean I know if you're making a declaration to the world 
it wants to be in a you know a more acceptable to the world sort of um grammar but um really who you're dealing with is your local is your local neighbors and your friends and family and um as long as you're from that area <laughs> what i'm saying is you want to use that same that same um tongue to describe things in your in your declaration and to make your statement right that was pretty simple wasn't it um i'm going to address this this other this other part of the legal system here now and i'm going to just try to explain my theory on the whole thing um of course i've been looking at a couple of channels the last several weeks now um i've looked at the glosser channel got some good stuff um and they bring up a lot of stuff that i already knew um but they really clarify it a lot better than you know what i ever knew about it you know i mean i obviously knew that like uppercase stuff was wrong it was obviously the the system name and all this kind of stuff but they kind of broke it down and explained a little bit about where it came from and all that kind of stuff um and you get into all this legalese stuff that we already knew about like four corners rule and boxes and brackets and everything you know and stuff in a box doesn't exist <laughs> you know um but and when you get into all that kind of stuff um i also before i start talking about all that boxes and everything um another two people that i bumped into as well i'll be looking at is this david Win miller character and mark christopher character um and they're pushing the parse syntax correct grammar and quantum grammar things as well um they are operating within the system um and they are doing it through and i'll just briefly touch on this they are doing it through the post office um and you'll have to go and look at their stuff if you're not familiar with them i would say i would take it with a very large pinch of, pin, pinch of salt <laughs> um some of the stories are very out there um and i deal with a lot of farmyard smells let's put it that way so i do i you know take it with a pinch of salt a very large dose of salts with that one because um they are operating through the post office now back in the olden days i believe you could put a postage stamp on a document sign through it and that was as good as gold you know what i mean um it author it authenticated that document okay they're doing the same thing now um the, there are a few things that i don't like the look of though with these characters they've got a not to say that they haven't got a lot of good stuff you know they've got a lot of good information but you have to you know dig through it um but they they're wearing this dog tag affair id with a picture of themselves a stamp on there that's signed through and they've got a a flag a united states flag now they're claiming that they have the authority to use that flag or they have claimed the authority and they're the only authority to use that flag well not quite sure how uh, the other thing is they're doing this live uh live life claim or something like that uh, which is some kind of claim through the system again that they are real men <laughs> The basics of the system is uh, the system can't deal with a real man so that's nonsense from the get-go okay but um th maybe they have a little higher standing under that claim i don't know but they've got this dog tag on with a blooming united states flag and their name printed out on it and i'm guessing it's the same name as on the birth certificate except they've written it correctly which shouldn't that shouldn't matter though 
Um, and they've also got the postage stamp on there. Now, last time I knew anything about it, the post office was part of the whole system. Um, so they've got an issue. Um, but if you walked into court with that around your neck, to me, that is giving the judge, it's just giving the judge jurisdiction straight away. But they're, you know, they're selling something and that's their idea. And personally, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot barge pole, but whatever. That was my quick. Be careful if you do go and look at these people or if you have looked at them and what they're selling. I don't trust it. OK, that's just my view, though. I'm not down on them or anything. They got to do what they got to do. I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I would just say be careful. Um, anyway, these two characters, they're pushing this um, correct grammar as well. So they'll break down a document, and when they go and confront a, you know, a, a doc, you know, a document in court or whatever, um, and they contest it, they'll break it down with all the stuff that you would normally do if you if you've looked into this, like the four corners rules, all the box boxes rules and the actual the grammar with the um just the way things are written <laughs> but they're they're going a step further and they're also breaking it down with parse and syntax into um what is wrong grammatically and even to a certain extent you know the prefixes that are in words and suffixes that are in, <laughs> that are in certain words and what those things mean and that they change the meaning of a word is what they're saying and of course then they've got their own system when they write a contract which is the the quantum grammar system which is you can you read a sentence front ways backwards it's the same thing and um mathematically they can assign numbers to these words and it's correct it comes out to an equation that is correct that I'm just touching, not skimming the surface. I can't explain it. I know it sounds weird, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. What I'm trying to get to is this idea of all that effort to learn all that stuff. I mean, it would take quite a long time to really learn how to do all that stuff, especially for somebody like me that was never even taught grammar at school. You know, as far as I got... <laughs> what's a verb what's a noun that's about it you know this is where you put a full stop this is where you put a comma that was about capital letter at the start of a sentence name capital letter that is about as much grammar as i know you know so for me to go down that road of trying to learn all that that is going to take a good year at least a good year to get my head wrapped around all that lot and do i do i need to get my head wrapped around it and do i want to get my head wrapped around it because the fact of the matter is and i'm going to go back through what i've just said um the fact of the matter is you didn't write the system so who are the people coming up with what's the correct grammar so this guy's somebody that's in the system that's come up because he's in the system he's got his dog tag and everything well i don't actually well he's got his business card is what he calls it but um that's in the system you know he's in the system your dictionaries black law oxford dictionary that's in the system um chicago style manual that's in the system everything's in the system everything's generated by the system all the teachers that are teaching grammar and supposedly the correct way to talk they're all in the system okay so you're dealing with a system based language already. Now, when it comes time to writing a document, who's deciding what's right and wrong? Sometimes it's just what just what is out there in the world, isn't it? Sometimes you're going to look at Black Laws dictionary, sometimes you're going to look at the Chicago Styles manual. Um you're going to be looking at lots of different areas, even sometimes in the law itself it's going to have how it should be written um, but tracking all this stuff down is very difficult and then ask the question is are there any 
rules that overlie these rules and are there any rules that overlie those rules and eventually you've got to go to the top uh, of the pyramid <laughs> you've got to go to the top of the pyramid and who makes the rules at the top of the pyramid well, that's the problem because you don't know nobody knows you're not gonna know you're never gonna find that one out probably not until you're gone <laughs> So, what I'm saying is, if you don't know what the ultimate rule is of the system, you're always going to be chasing your tail trying to find out what the real rules are. Now, you might discover something and have some luck with a certain remedy, but the problem is, once too many people start having a bit of luck with that remedy, then all of a sudden, the rules get changed, you know? I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but it happens, you know. Um, and the fact of the matter is they're changing stuff all the bloody time. And all they've got to do, bring in a new act, a new um, set of rules, new regulations, and new code. And all of a sudden, what you've just learned is now longer, no longer applic applicable. And you're scrambling around searching for a new remedy within the system. And this is the problem with the system. You're always going to be searching for a new remedy. Um, what we've got to remember is the system's not really designed. It wasn't originally designed for people. Okay, It was designed for traders um, to be locked in with other traders rather than men being locked in a system. And again, here's another problem. You are dealing with this grammar. This grammar is written, the grammar that's within the system, the legalese type grammar. That grammar is written for a person. Okay, it doesn't have to be correct. It doesn't have to be correct. It doesn't have to be correct by any standard in the, you know, in the perceived notion of of um, dictionaries and everything else, it it doesn't actually have to be um, correct in that sense, because all it is is it's a, a fiction writing something to another bloody fiction. Gobbledygook. Do they need to have a set of rules for gobbledygook? No. So arguing. This is the problem with going in and arguing this in court, because, uh, for example, is if the judge really does have truly, let's say there is a hidden rule there, the judge always has the final say. That's the hidden rule. It doesn't matter if something is um, written grammatically incorrect, if the judge interprets it as meaning something. In that situation you're done you've got no you that's it game over pack your bags get in that cell <laughs> you're done you know this is what I'm trying to get through to people anytime you look to the system for a remedy you are gonna get screwed you know one way or the other you can't deal with it you have to take yourself out of their jurisdiction not that you're ever in their jurisdiction, but what they try to do is they want you to believe that they're, you're in their jurisdiction. They want you to believe that material items in this world are in their jurisdiction. They want you to believe that that house that you've got, you've got a copy of a title for it, and they've got a, a title for it as well. And they want you to believe that you own it, at the same time, you've got to pay taxes on it. So they actually own it. Well, guess what? They don't own it because they've only got a colour of title. Because they can't have a real title. Why can't they have a real title? Because they're a fiction. Okay, so right now, probably I would say the majority of America is, is probably unclaimed. <laughs> Believe it or not. There may be some Indian res reservations that are claimed, but even some of those Indian re re reservations 
I'm not quite sure the legal standing on them, you know, and whether those Indians go ahead and claim their land. I don't know, you know. Um, I would doubt that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of a figure off the top of my head, but I bet you there's maybe only ten percent that's actually claimed, you know, and that'll be. Um, people that know what they're doing <laughs> anyway um, I guess I kind of digressed what this leads me to in dealing with other men and women because if you're making a claim of land or a house or of you know any kind of um, material goods in this world if you're making a claim to those things who are you going to be dealing with? You're going to be dealing with other men and women. Your neighbours. You know. You want to make a claim. You're going to just, you know, make your neighbours. Notify your neighbours. So you're going to need to talk in a language that they can understand. Do, does your everyday man or woman understand legalese? Do they understand quantum grammar? Do they even have what I would call prescriptively correct grammar? A lot of them not no. So you've got to deal with what people talk. You've got to deal with the common language. If you want to deal with a man, you've got to use common language so he can understand it correctly. Okay? You should probably not put your stuff, this is just my theory, you should probably not put your stuff in a, try to put it in a 100% legal format. You know, who makes the rules up? On how a document should be um, drawn up. Yeah, there's a load of people that do, you know, college professors, judges, all these kind of persons that make these rules up. But you've got to make your own, you've kind of got to make your own rules up, but you've got to do it in a way you've got to think through the same way as they would when they are writing up a, a legal document. You're thinking about how how that reads to somebody else. You're thinking about all the things that can be misinterpreted, and you're thinking about um, you know writing it correctly. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to. You know, do you have to put a signature uh, or an autograph? You know. At a certain location in the document, or is it all right just to put it? You know, I mean, of course you've got it. You need to put it like at the end of a document to say this is all above. The previous stuff is all, you know, genuine. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't have to be. You know, you look at a legal document and everything's just right. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that for people working in the natural realm okay i think i've talked this one to death now um i haven't got anything else to say about it i think i lost my track halfway through um the the main issue to come away with the main point to come away from with this would be legal jargon finding the actual rules out on it is very difficult. Can you ever find out what is at the top of the rule book? What what stuff's hidden? Can you ever find that stuff out? And the answer is probably no. So the problem is you don't know if there's something that's superseding what you're thinking is um, reality in the legal sense. So you can't rely on that, <laughs> okay? Secondly, everything that is legal is written for the person. The person is their person. They invented the person, okay? It's irrelevant whether that, that person can't understand anything anyway. He can't read or write. That's why they'll assign you a lawyer, because that person can't do anything, okay? That person's got nothing to do with you, really. You shouldn't really be dealing with it, but you do. So it doesn't matter what 
nonsense they write. <laughs> you know, because it's not real. None of it's real. So trying to argue this isn't correct grammar when none of it's real anyway is just like, I don't know. I mean, it's just insane. In the real world, you need to speak a language that another man that's maybe in your locale, locale, in your local area, that he can understand. So you can both understand each other. It's that simple. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. Um, and that's what I'll be doing. And then I'll use the, the, uh, then use, you know, I mean, and then if you need to notify the, um, the legal system of some kind of change of status or status, as we like to say over here, um, or some something that's happened in the real world, if you need to explain something to them, you just use your person. And it's not your person, you just use the person. Okay? Um, you know, because they will be observing the overlay, the tracing paper overlay of the map, which is the real world, they do base a lot of their stuff on the real world. So when you die, that person's going to get a, a death certificate. You know? Anyway, done it to death. It's this is actually you'll be you've got to be grateful because this is at least 10, 15 minutes shorter than my previous versions. <laughs> uh, great, I don't know about grateful for that waffle, but anyway. If you've got any comments, drop them below. Tell me what I've got wrong. Um, tell me I'm an idiot. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> if you've got a question, if you've got something that you want to find out about, maybe I've got a different perspective on it. Maybe I don't have a perspective on it. Maybe I can help you, you know, do something. You know, I don't know. Drop, drop me a comment because I do check the comments fairly frequently. and. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.